Hello, hello, everybody. It's Michael again, and we are at the Alps Conference 2023. Uh, it's day two, and we have the pleasure uh, of not being alone. Hello, Marco. Hey. Hello, Mike. So we're having fun and uh, we're hearing a lot, a lot of different conferences and speakers. And I can really tell you that it's amazing. So if you want to listen to them, of course, we'll put them in the podcast. But you can also go to the YouTube channel and you will see all the videos. And today we have the pleasure of um, meeting Vanja Palmer. Hello, Vanja. Hello, Michael. So just to introduce you a little bit, you are a Zen monk. You were born in Austria and grew up in Switzerland. Uh, and you have experimented with meditation as a Zen monk, of course, but also with psychedelics. And uh, there was a, a great movie made two years ago on what you did and the test you did with, I think, Vollenweider, which is really well known in the, the space. Descending the Mountain was the name of the documentary. I loved it. It was really amazing. And here you were in, in today to talk about... Uh, 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 meditation and psychedelics. So, uh, pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Very kind. <clears throat> so, uh, maybe to start, uh, wh where did your interest uh, in, medi in meditation come from and then also in psychedelics? <laughs> well, that is an easy question to answer. Very clearly, uh, it was uh, uh, a few micrograms of uh, uh, mushroom derivate, also known as LSD, that uh, threw me out of my the, the, the familiar rut that I was in my career, that I was, I was a student at the University of Zurich. And, and, and in that, I'm a typical rep representative of a whole generation who, who um, turned on, tuned in, and dropped out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so that was uh, basically my entrance into meditation was clearly through a mystical experience prompted by, a, uh, by LSD, And the LSD, I dropped out, out of curiosity. I, try, I was always curious in life and tried out many things. Mm -hmm. And what about the, the Zen monk? How did well, that, uh, then for a few years, I, I, I considered myself to be a yogi. Walked around like that, and all white, and did a lot of practices. And, and then somehow, through circumstances, I ended up in, in New York and uh, bought a Harley Davidson and drove across the country and then ended up in Tassajara, the uh, oldest Zen monastery outside of, of, of Asia, and more or less stayed there for 10 years and lived the life of a monk. Mm -hmm. mm. Very interesting. Do you know that the NZZ has called you the most dangerous man in Switzerland? <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> Well, it's actually the the the, uh, the quote uh, that the article was actually quite nice, uh, not mean. And uh, the quote is a, a, a play of words that Nixon called Timothy Leary the most dangerous man of America, ah. and it says that in the in the in the article that uh, because uh, I was pro pro proposing probably similar radical ideas in that interview, which was. Originally an interview on animal rights, and but it got uh, changed a little bit in the process. <laughs> very, very funny. I usually hear people putting psychedelics on one side and spirituality on another side. And actually, based on your experience, how is the use of psychedelics in harmony with being a Zen monk? Um, yeah, a good question. Um, I find these things um, very compatible. And uh, in that survey of the tricycle, like over 60% of the practicing Zen people said that they could well imagine a combination of, of these two methods. That uh, How that exactly will look, we will have to find out. I mean, <clears throat> sac spirit, uh, sacraments or substances have been on the root of, I believe, all high religions. Uh, and more and more uh, scientific evidence is coming up now um, that, uh, you know, in, including Christianity and, 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 and Jewism and, and, and Buddhism, Hinduism. In Hinduism, it's very clear. I mean, the Buddha went into, so the story, uh, after he left the palace and he became a, an ascetic, he went into the forest and studied with all the masters and And we know these masters up to this day, the, the Babas, the naked Babas, and the, there are thousands of them, tens of thousands. Uh, they're well versed in these psychedelic substances. And it would be very unlikely that he would not have tried those mm -hmm. things in his career. 
So how to combine them, we will have to, in the, uh, we'll have to find out. My teachers always were quite open to it. Both the I have two formal teachers, one is a Benedictine monk, now 98. He tri he's not a psychonaut by any means, but he tried everything. And he wrote interesting and supporting things about it. And my other, the Zen teacher, Zen, he has died many years ago, 20 years ago. But he tried out also just about... Um, just about anything that, uh, and he also had uh, uh, positive things to say about it and encouraged me to proceed on the path that I have uh, taken. If I do remember well, uh, the introduction before your conference was around the answer to the question, who am I? <laughs> and is it not related to the same quest, psychedelics and spirituality are willing to address this question, who am I? Absolutely, I totally agree, and uh, they both they're both they're quite different approaches in some ways to the same question, the ultimate question of of our being that we have to conf which we you know we forget. And as a as a little child, we still know, but then uh, to grow up, to become a person, to be able to live in this world, we have to put that sort of on a back burner. We have to function. We have to do things, but. The real question again and again is, who are we? What, what are we doing here? And, uh, and there's no easy answer to that. And it's a, a process that we, uh, well, Rilke calls it, we, uh, we, uh, we, we uh, kreisen uh, uh, around the old tower for thousands of years. And we don't know, are we a song or a bird or the wind? <clears throat> so the mystery of, uh, we don't, Ultimately, we don't know who we are, and we have to, but we have to face that unknown, and we have to be able to live and express in our life the fact that we are not knowing. Mm -hmm. And to this purpose, what is mind medicine? Well, <coughs> medicines have, have been explicitly uh, permitted to monks. Monks can have monks and nuns can have four things. They can have shelter. They can have clothing and they can have food and they can have medicine, explicitly permitted to have medicine. And I see them as medicines to help our torted, uh, tor torted uh, twisted, uh, sick minds, which as a culture and as individuals we generally have, as a culture particularly, uh, uh, to, to um, help them to some sanity. Yeah. Well, you were saying... Um, Uh, the culture as a sick mind. So how do you view uh, the culture or let's say the society actually and what, why, why is it sick according to you? <coughs> well, in some ways you could say that <laughs> it's not a pleasant thought, but uh, that the humans, we humans have in the biological sphere become a, a, a cancerous growth, which um, we grow very fast at the expense of many other parts of the world and Uh, it's a suicidal uh, path we're on, uh, obviously, on all levels that we look. Uh, 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 we are too many and we behave in a totally uh, unsustainable way. So that's uh, one sign of, of, of unhealthiness. But maybe even more directly, we are not so happy. We, are, we seem to, the paradigm that we live on, that we... Uh, that we are told by uh, advertising and so forth, well, you are not happy, well, of course not, because you need a new car or a new job or a new partner, whatever. Uh, that kind of going out consumerism is, is uh, very, very strong in, in our culture. And it seems to be uh, such an attractive model that, we, that most of the rest of the world wants to follow that. A few that don't want, well, those we force, But uh, most of them volatilely want to uh, try to become what we have and do. But are we really so happy? Good question. And how do you think psychedelic or meditation can, can help us in, in this way? Well, bringing awareness, bringing consciousness to these facts and looking at taking the time, stopping. Well, psychedelics stop you. That, can, that uh, we can attest to. Well, meditation also, you stop, you, you actually, if possible, every day, it doesn't have to be for hours, but just for a few minutes, 10 minutes, to actually stop and to come back to 
to our being, to, to our body, to our mind. Who, where is my body? How does it feel? How, where is my mind? How does it... Usually we are so busy that we don't even pay any attention to that. So both meditation as a daily practice, and you can do that also during the day, very helpful, you know. You, you, can, you make telephone uh, meditation. Every time the phone rings, instead of immediately going and, and answering it, you stop. You take one breath, you stop, you take one breath and you come back to yourself and then you answer the phone and you're actually there to answer whoever is calling. So these are sort of little helps that are traditionally used in, in monasteries and temples, but we can use it in our, in our daily secular life to stop in the morning, you know, including like we brush our teeth and we make some tea and so forth. Well, why not take five or ten minutes where you light a stick of incense or a candle or sit down or just want to look out the window. Just stop and come to, your, come to your senses, come to your feeling and thinking and mind. And that, I think that is, the, to me, the, the key is, is the presence and awareness. Well, well said. Um, and when you see everything, th that those tools exist, what are your hopes for the future? You are at a, a psychedelic science conference. Uh, how, do you, how do you see the future? <laughs> uh, well, from a from a um, from if I look as a, from my mind, if I look critically as my mind, uh, it doesn't look so good for the human species. For the big picture, no problem. There will, thanks God, man, we are not that powerful. The the insects will survive us, and many things will. Survive. Life goes on. We are just an episode on that one. On a very small scale, personally, I'm an old man. I have had a good life, and if it happens now, I'm think. I hope I'm ready. For the human species, it doesn't look so good. It doesn't look so good. But again, that not looking so good may very well be part of a bigger picture that we just don't see and know. So I really trust the whole process. I trust evolution. I trust. I mean, we, I, we haven't, I haven't gotten myself here in my own doing. I just find myself here. And there's obviously, so obvious, there are totally other forces in play. And we're just a tiny little part of it. So I trust the whole process. And even if that means that probably the human species is, uh, is not going to be on this planet forever, which, I mean, we know for sure, but maybe it's sooner than we think. And And if we don't learn to be, if we learn to be more compassionate and wiser, we could easily revert a lot of the problematic uh, things that we behave and that we do. But it doesn't look like it. We are, if anything, going more and faster in the wrong direction. So, but even that, I look with that, uh, with the, and then it's probably good if we don't, become, the way we treat our fellow earthlings is so terrible, the, the animals, how we treat them in industrial uh, farming and in, in, in laboratories, then it's good that we go. If we don't, if we don't be, wake up to be more compassionate and more wise, then it's good that we go. Mm. Well, it's a uh, very <laughs> profound word, <laughs> and I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. And uh, if uh, people want to learn more about you, about what you do, and uh, um, about the community uh, you lead uh, as a Zen monk, where can they go? <laughs> Into themselves. <laughs> That's a <bit> well said. <laughs> Very good. I will put a few links on the web page. Exactly. I guess. And because uh, Anja didn't want to speak about Velzen Tor, I think it's a beautiful place that uh, you mm. are at uh, near the Rigi, mm. near Lucerne, mm. which is a beautiful place, which I've never been to, but mm. I've been through this movie, mm. Descending the Mountain, which mm. I really recommend everybody to see, mm. also on psychedelics and meditation, but also on pure, beautiful pictures, mm. which I really, mm. really enjoy yeah, again. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, first of all, I wanted to say thank you. Thank, thank you, you for very being here. Well, thank thank you. you for uh, showing us something different, something maybe less scientific but more uh, about uh, ourselves and i think <laughs> it's uh, it's great to have this uh, also in uh, such a conference so thank you vonja thank you very Thanks much again. michael and marco